Hello everyone, welcome along to Sports Pizza. Glad to have you on what is an interesting uh, week of Easter. Happy Easter to everyone celebrating and of course uh, the continuous fasting to all our Muslim brothers as well. It is glad to have you join us uh, once again for another episode of Sports Pizza where we bring you some of the uh, biggest stories from the entire sports uh, value chain. It's great to have everyone joining us. And of course, if you've been following us on social media, we've been uh, dropping some nice stuff for you there. And of course, it's been great to see your reactions to all uh, the content we put out. So always a pleasure to have you join us on Sports Pizza. We're going to take a first break on the show as we always do. When we come back, we'll be the gentleman in the house to assist in chopping up all the topics of conversation. Welcome back to Sports Bits. Uh, always a pleasure to have you join us. My name is Yubi. And so, I'm joined by Fala Nadini for uh, what I call an Easter special of Sports Bits. Glad to have you here, uh, Fala Nadini, because um, we are working um, in a period where it's a nice mood, um, you know, so much happening, holidays and whatnot. Good to see you. It's what we signed up for. I mean, yeah. To, yeah. To inform our viewers. I tell you what, I totally enjoy working uh, on the holidays because the roads are free <laughs> and, you know, it's just a, a nice little, you know, people are freer and, and, and a sure. lot more relaxed. Sure. But what an interesting weekend of, of uh, you know, sporting activity we saw. We saw um, something in the UFC 28, which we're going to start off with. Let's start off with Israel. The shining lights of uh, Nigerian athleticism across the world. Uh, so, you know, New Zealand born, but I haven't seen any any Nigerian who lives in diaspora fronts Nigeria the way he does. Mm -hmm. The style bender came up, uh, you know, as a winner at the fourth time of asking. Look, talk to me about that fight and just how important it was for him to win. Because when you fight someone three times and they beat you all three times, the fourth time is almost a formality. So to come back and do it in the style he did it, second round, five minutes in, knockout. Mm, and, and that's the beauty of you know sports, you know, when you allow complacency to set into your into your craft, into your game. That's that's what you get at the end of the day. Talking about Alex Pereira, I mean, I, I'm 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 very sure he felt really really overconfident. That, I, mean, I beat this guy in kickboxing. They were graduated into uh, UFC, MMA, and, and you beat him again. Beat him again. Just November last year. That's like five months ago or six months ago, there about. And I'm, I'm fighting him again. I mean, I should be able to take him out uh, this time around. And it, it felt like it was going to happen. But I mean, uh, the God of Israel, you know, prevailed <laughs> 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 at the end of the day. I mean, with with Israel, I just am knocking knocking him out and. Um, he, he could have lost the game, talking about Israel at this point, but uh, Izzed was in the game. He didn't allow the previous defeats you know, to get into his head uh, and he showed that uh, he's a true Nigerian, he's a yeah. true African, uh, with our backs against the wall, can always you know, prevail at the end of the day. And that yeah. was what happened to Israel at this point. Kudos to him. Well, I hope that's the feeling you and every one of us uh, gets to feel at some point in our lives, especially off the back of Israel at this year's uh, victory in UFC 28. My name is Yubi, and so do one of I'm still here with uh, um, Falana Deni. Falana, it's uh, great to have you uh, here. Always a great chat. Um, let's get away from one Nigerian to another Nigerian, Anthony Joshua, who's um, you know said, look, he's taking a break from boxing up until uh, November, if I'm not mistaken. Um, look, it was touted that he would be in the ring maybe three months after the last fight, but um, he decided against that, said, look, I'm not going to fight Tyson Fury at the moment, or did and White, who he was rumored to fight, was going to take a break. What do you make of that? Well, I think th th there are rumors that Anthony Joshua so far the broken nose in the last fight against Jeremy Franklin. And, I mean, you, you could see that um, he had blood you know, all, all over his body, and it was a brutal fight. He needed that you know, to win. And, uh, well, he has come out to tell us that, hey, I'm, I'm taking a break, which, is, which, is, which I feel is good for him right now. Uh, because I don't think he's in the right frame of mind to fight Tyson Fury. He needs to keep climbing the ladder, you know, st keep beating you know, the usual, not, not disrespect to them, but the guys you feel you can beat just to build confidence yeah. and to build momentum for you. Uh, and for the first time in his career, he didn't fight for a belt. Uh, so maybe he needs to go on that path, yeah. you know, before he can actually challenge. Maybe you'll see Dante Wider or, or Tyson Fury. And right. also, December, November, that's, that's what we're looking at. Maybe that will even afford his promoter, IDN, uh, because he's trying to push out uh, a fight that will involve Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury, Dante Wider, and uh, Usyk. 
know, and a super four fight. Yeah, yeah that's what he, he has called it. So maybe the, the, this from April to November, December, he can be able to fix that fight. Yeah, talk to all, all parties, and everyone will come to an agreement. But hey, Anthony Joshua, I think it's the right step for him mm. to actually take a break. Too. Right then, uh, take a break. Uh, that's what Anthony uh, Joshua has done. We're not taking any breaks uh, for now because we are still uh, pretty much uh, moving uh, very swiftly to some uh, more Nigerian uh, related stories. Let's touch base with the Nigerian Premier Football League 2023 season as Bendel Insurance you know, continue their unbeaten run, which is becoming um, a bit of a, a, bo a, a draw fest at the moment. So, look, four draws on the spin uh, off the back of from the break last time out. They've drawn two games uh, consecutively now. Um, the latest uh, draw coming up against uh, Play 2, uh, Quarry United, Quarry I beg your United, pardon. Yeah. Talk to me about that and, you know, when they started to pick up points because I've always said that, you know, in my footballing philosophy, two draws, I take one defeat and one win than two draws. So, um, what do you make of that? Do you agree with that? Yeah, I, I, I totally, totally agree with you. I mean, it's something that Joseph Marino would not like, talking about what Brendan Shores are doing uh, right now. And I think... Um, they, they, they've left their foot up of, of, of the pedal, you know, right now because uh, it's like they feel their home and dry. I mean, we're, we're true to the uh, to the Super Six playoff, so don't let us, you know, exact energy like we did in the first half of the season. And that is due to the fact that the chasing packs are really, really not impressive. Anybody not impressive? Remo stars are not impressive, and that is why I feel even Aqua United. Also not impressive. That is why I feel that you know, Bender Insurance and Bigger Pardo feel that okay, we can just take this easy and get our preparation and get ourselves ready for the for the super six. Mm. The danger of that is when you start dropping the momentum right now in the regular in the group in, uh, in the group stage. When you get to the super six, that might also affect your game right, right now. So I think the fear factor is kind of no longer there. You know, for for Bender Insurance, I think teams now feel comfortable. Yeah. You know, playing against them, I, I also we can have a go at them, unlike what we saw with them in the first half yeah. of the season. So the coach needs to work on the players to get back to what they were. You know, before before the league went on the break. Uh, Bender Insurance, I have a coach in Coach Monday Odigi. Last time they actually won a game was uh, against Aimba uh, back in February, if I'm not mistaken. Of course, they've uh, since gone on to draw Aimba in the return game. At the um, you know about a township stadium, and of course, that game was the last game before. The last, last game for the break. break and first game after the break as well. Uh, they also did draw um, Aqua United at their home ground in Benindi, uh, somewhere in Bermuda Stadium, and of course they had a, a nice uh, hard fought draw against Plato United out there at the Round Palm Stadium in Joss, and most recently uh, drawing against Choir United at the Samuel Obermudia Stadium. Aqua United, of course, uh, four points off the pace with 33 points. They've actually drew, their, drew they also drew their last game, I beg your pardon, uh, from, um, you know, you know the 3-2, 2-2 two, 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 uh, draw against Nasarawa United at the Goto de Pavio Stadium. Remo Stars uh, also find themselves in third place as well with a 1-1 draw against the Shooting Stars of Ibadan. Move on to uh, uh, teams in Group B. Lobby Stars continue to hold fourth uh, there with a win over um, Abia Warriors. Two goals to nil. That was the result there. And of course, we also saw Rivers United getting a, a nil-nil over Niger uh, Tornadoes. They, actually, they haven't played uh, for quite some time. And it's got to be said, they have a one game in hand. The rest of um, Group A actually have played one more game than the guys in Group B. So that's how things currently stand for the average uh, format of the league. Right, let's get away from all of that now. Let's touch base uh, with another story, which has been pretty interesting, but we've got to take a break because when we come back, we'll switch gears to some uh, English Premier League football. It was a massive weekend for the Premier League titles. As far as ramifications go, Arsenal continue to hold fourth at the top of the table, even though they got their lead topped by two points. Welcome back to Sports Pizza. We are in the uh, English Premier League slash European uh, segment of the show where we uh, bring to you uh, some of the uh, biggest stories from the European continent. Let's start off with England. Falan Adeni is still here in the studio. Uh, Arsenal, your dear Arsenal, uh, had the biggest match of uh, uh, match okay. day. What was that now? Match day 30 or you know, 30 in Arsenal's uh, uh, you know, point of view. 2-2 uh, against Liverpool, one of the most scintillating games of the season. I think when you watch that game back, you know, you kind of realized that it was maybe one of the classics 
of the Premier League era. I do that thing. Do you do it as well? You know, go back and watch the games sure. just when you're less tense and when sure. you're sure. less um, <laughs> under pressure. And you get to see more details that, that you'd have missed Definitely. when Definitely. Um, the game was actually live. But uh, Liverpool were always never going to be a, a, an easy nut to crack. You know, Anfield Absolutely. is quite the venue for them. Maybe the most emotional club in all of European football. But Arsenal went there, raced into a two-goal lead, got pegged back just before halftime and eventually at, at the death, you know, got um, equalised against. But Arsenal did have a couple chances to um, run away with the, with the game early on in the first half. But it was a game of two halves, the proverbial mm -hmm. two halves, Arsenal the first, Liverpool the second. And uh, same thing happened against Tottenham was four at Tottenham was four stadium, you know, a couple of months back, you know, Arsenal racing into a two goal lead and uh, Tottenham almost almost scored, you know, a goal just before half time, but that didn't happen. And I then then, then I knew Arsenal had won this game, you know, two near at half time. I don't see the way Tottenham I don't see Tottenham getting back to the game. Same thing same mindset I had when when they played against uh, uh, Liverpool over the weekend, you know. If if the game had uh, at half time at the two nil at half time uh, they, I don't think Liverpool would have you know, found a way back into the game. But the moment they scored a goal and the Anfield fans you know, smelled blood, I mean, it's just like a shark that smells blood. Anywhere, I mean, the blood is definitely fine. It, that was what happened uh, against, against Liverpool. A goal back, you knew what you were going to get uh, yeah. at Anfield. And um, just like you said, it was a game of two hours. It could have gone either way. Liverpool could have won the game 4 5 5 2. Asna could have also snacked the game yeah. late, but uh, all in all, it was an interesting game. Do you feel I'm like really enjoying an uh, entertaining game? Do you feel like it was a game of um, you know the analysis and the summary of the game would be um, you know two points dropped or one points gained? And actually, what makes you think that is that the, the both teams could have said that you know both teams could have said easily we dropped two points or we could have you know gained one point. So that makes you know that it's a, it was a very good game. A very very good game. Just like I said, it, it could have gone either way, uh, but. Because that's not chasing the title and Liverpool are not in, in a good form right now. So I think Liverpool fans will definitely be uh, okay with the one point that they get and to be a bit of disappointment for Arsenal for yeah. that they were not able to win uh, the game. And that's because you raised into a two-goal lead. Yeah. And that's and you ended up uh, drawing the game. But then again, some Arsenal fans will also feel happy that at least we didn't lose uh we didn't lose the game. I mean we were finally able to out that, you know, poor run uh, and, against and Liverpool, Liverpool yeah. at, at Anfield. And it's it's all in all, it's, it's it's a good game. It's a good game. Both teams will definitely be happy with the point uh, they got, but their fans will definitely not be happy with it. Well, of course, uh, let's uh, touch base with Chelsea, whose uh, return uh, for Frank Lampard wasn't quite the uh, return he would have expected. Um, a 1-0 uh, loss at the Molyneux to Wolverhampton Wanderers, courtesy of uh, Matthews Nunes goal. One of the goals of the season, for sure. Um, the way he struck that volley on the half spin, uh, interesting uh, technique to strike a ball then. But Frank Lampard, um, you know, returning to the club, uh, didn't quite signal any uh, change in fortunes. Chelsea didn't quite look like they were going to score um, same old, same old story. Sa same old story for Chelsea. I mean, they've played 30 games, they've scored 39 goals uh, in the Premier League. Uh, Alina has a good goal more than Chelsea, by the way. Erling Haaland, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I has a good goal more than Chelsea. And um, definitely not a good one. I mean, uh, we talk bringing Frank Lampard into the team, probably ease the pressure on the New manager team. bounce, so to speak. When your new manager bounce is not bouncing. <laughs> then <laughs> there, there's a problem. problem because I mean, I, and, and I, I like the fact that the owners have decided that we're not going to hire a new manager until the end of the season. Yeah. So whoever they're going to hire definitely knows I'm the one that's going to get the job. So he's definitely seeing something right now with the team yeah. that he is going to change when it comes at the end of the season. Yeah. So, um, not just if they've already given up on the season. Mm. So let's just wait and see what will happen at the end of the season for coaches. Uh, for any coach that Chelsea uh, are, are going yeah. to sign. I thought you were Chelsea uh, on the same, just uh, six points better off than uh, Crystal Palace, who had their new manager bounce uh, with uh, Roy Hodgson. Uh, they've got two back-to-back -back, uh, wins. Uh, a 5-1 victory over Leeds was just remarkable and whatnot. What about Manchester City, who, uh, you know, pretty much uh, picking form at the right time in their season. A 4-1 victory over Southampton. Saw Erling Haaland uh, race to his 30-goal mark in the Premier League and the record for the Premier League is 34, which was actually scored by Alan Shearer. It was actually scored in a 42-game season. This kid has come to the Premier League. He scored 30 goals in, what, 28 matches thereabout. And he's got four goals to equal the record. You know, five to break it, and there are at least 
you know, eight more games, eight to, more go. games to go. Uh, I, I'm laughing because I remember a colleague, Baba Jide Guerrero, saying, Alan will not score 30 goals in the Premier League <laughs> on the podcast. I remember him saying that. But I mean, this, this kid is he, just shattering the record. When you play this team like City and you know how to convert chances, you're going to get fed with 12 lot, lot touches chances. on the ball. Is what he got. I, I, I didn't sign you to come and touch the ball. Okay, put you the can ball. touch the ball, but put the ball in the, put the ball touch in it in the right area. Exactly. I mean, remember with Van Nistel, right? I mean, he doesn't need to dribble like that. You yeah. Know? Filippo Inzaghi, I can go on and on and with, with players that don't, they don't necessarily play the ball. Do it, you know, they don't the involve way. themselves in yeah, the play. Yeah, exactly. But, but they get a the job done. They, they right. get the job done. And that, that's the most important thing for, 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 for a striker. striker. Yeah. I mean, I think I would take uh, Alan over Gabriel Jesus any day, yeah. any time. Gabriel Jesus is not a bad player. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So I think City are picking from at the right time. Jack Grealish, by the way, picking from uh, at the right time. It's and, been a different uh, player since the World Cup. If Arsenal don't win the league and City wins the league, I don't think it would be a big disappointment, you know, for for, for Arsenal fans. Yeah, it's, they are going to feel disappointed that yeah they lost the league. Right. You know, having having come all the way in the this season, but for City to with the I mean City any day any time they yeah. beat him. Yeah. On the flip side, it would actually be incredible for Arsenal to go ahead and win the Premier League title, especially Definitely. over a team that have got a potentially 40-goal striker, 40 goal striker exactly. in uh, their team. So uh, tell me about the stakes uh, involved in this um, incredible, very compelling Premier League title race. And boy, it looks as if it's though as if though it's going to go down uh, to the wire right it then. Uh, Man United, of course, uh, won 2-0 victory over Everton. Um, back-to-back wins. For the first time since that, you know, Carabao Cup final. They're in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. Um, quarterfinals of, semifinals of the FA oh, Cup, I beg your pardon. Quarterfinals, quarterfinals of Europa League and uh, also um, in the race for the top four. Problem is Newcastle are also picking <laughs> at the right time, right? Newcastle, uh, five wins on a spin. Um, scoring lots of goals as well. And they've got a striker back just at the right time. Isak. Alexander Isak. On the flip side, United have lost, um, you know, Rashford to a groin injury. Um, which could be easily 10 days, you know, or, um, you know, two weeks there about. What do you make of the contrasting fortunes of both teams? I, I think United will, will pick points. I think they will pick points. Uh, they just need to score goals. Because when you look at United, their goal difference, I think they are on plus seven, if I'm not mm. mistaken. Uh, but Newcastle United are scoring for fun. Tottenham as well also, I mean, when you have Arkin, definitely you're going yeah. to score. And other players will contribute. But I think if Rashford doesn't score for United, or if Rashford doesn't, you know, pop up, or if he doesn't cook, as we say on the street, I mean, uh, United will always find it difficult to score, to score, yeah. to score goals. So I think that's what United just needs to do. Yeah. To score goals. I, I don't think United will drop out of the top four at the end of the season. Mm. They, they just need to. So it's, it's a direct battle between Newcastle United and Tottenham Hotspur. United should should have enough to finish top mm. you know, at the end of the season. It almost feels as if though United cannot have it all because you know Ericsson and Casemiro return for the next couple of games, then Rashford, Rashford goes out and Lucia also goes out. So, it'll uh, be an interesting <laughs> uh, race to the end of the season, that's for sure. But uh, keep an eye on the relegation uh, dog fight between uh, Leicester, uh, Nottingham Forest, and of course Southampton, who are, who are all in that mix. Everton, you feel, uh, might just have a little bit in terms of the managerial experience of uh, ah, Sean Dyke. Maybe finally, they are far with Leku Keg. <laughs> I mean, they, they avoided relegation last season. I mean, it, it, it's almost the same thing that we saw with Sunderland a couple of seasons back. You know, always escaping, always yeah. escaping, always escaping. Finally, um, Nemesis cut, caught up with them and, 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 and they got relegated. Yeah. Maybe the same thing will happen to Everton this time. But around. what a remarkable story for uh, teams like Aston Villa, who, uh, since the appointment of Unai Emery, um, only Arsenal and Manchester City have won more points than them, and no team has won uh, more. Uh, away games, which is just remarkable, and what a form Oli Watkins finds Definitely. himself in. What a top striker at the moment uh, he is. Right then, let's switch uh, from the Premier League to uh, the uh, second division of the English uh, football uh, pyramid in Championship. Of course, uh, Burnley uh, qualifying uh, at the first time of asking with uh, Vanson Company, who's a, a City uh, legend, and there's also a United legend in the mix as well, who he did beat to get that. Automatic uh, <laughs> qualification in Michael Carrick. The scripts in football are one of the most well-written scripts, and the subplots are always there uh, to enjoy. But Vincent Company, um, back to the Premier League as a manager. First time of asking. Mm, and um, the, the fair for Burnley right now is um, 
get into the Premier League. They play exciting football. I mean, I, I follow the game. There's a particular guy that plays their right wing, and Nathan Teller. Mm. And Nathan Teller, that's his name. Uh, the fear now is teams who probably come The out, Eagles are circling. Yeah, cherry pick their players, and even the coach. I mean, you can't deny the fact that um, company has, has, has he learned well under Pep Guardiola, and uh, he, he's showing, he's showing what what um, he, he did with Bali. He came into the team and told them that if you really want to play football, then you really should play football. You know, we are not here to make up the numbers. You know, we need to get back into the Premier League, yeah. and that has happened uh, if, for, for them. And I think same thing is also happening for Mikel Arteta last night. I mean, they have this um, this motivational you know spirit with them. Right. You know, they, they, they have a way of you know getting the players to do what they want the players to do. Right. And that is what has happened to to, to Burnley. A good one for them. A good one for them. They fair again. Teams will cherry pick their, their top yeah. players, you know. but hey, you will get premium premium money for them yeah. if, if, you want, if, you want, if you want your players to go. And of course, that money helps you uh, go ahead and rebuild uh, your team. Uh, Vesa Company, congrats to himself and Brown. He did say that um, they are now the 21st best team in the Premier League, League, which is what you know they need to do. Great stuff. Actually, I like quotes like that. You know. All right, then. Time to switch gears to uh, other uh, countries in Europe. Spain, one of which uh, Real Madrid, even though they're in the Copa del Rey, have lost more ground on the La Liga title race. Welcome back to the uh, final uh, slice of the pizza here on uh, Sports Pizza. Glad to have you stay with us all through the episodes. We totally appreciate your uh, hanging with us here. Falan Adeni is still in the studio. My name is Yubi. And so, and one of it. Let's touch base with uh, another Nigerian player who's uh, doing great exploits out there in Spain uh, in the person of uh, Samuel Chukweze, who uh, destroyed or eviscerated um, Nacho. And that's the man who would... Um, have nightmares of the kid in the yellow submarine jersey. 3-2 was the result. Uh, VRL against uh, Real Madrid. Real Madrid, of course, pretty much you could say that's the end for them in the title race in La Liga. But Samuel Chukweze continues to impress in some very high-profile games. He's having a great season for uh, VRL, sure, sure. but doesn't quite do it for Nigeria is the question on the mind of the fans. Yeah, when it comes to Villarreal, it turns to a prime Iron Robin. Um, when it comes to Nigeria, uh, I don't know what I can... I mean, <laughs> like, we, we, get like, <laughs> we get it. We get it. But I mean, Real Madrid and Nigeria, they, 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 they have this thing. I mean, Nigeria can just pop up against Real Madrid. Remember the days of Kichuku yeah. and Kaluche, you know, yeah, and, uh, in, uh, in, in the Spanish La Liga for recreative or whatever. And, and it's um, a good one for Samba Chuku, is a good goal. Uh, I don't think Nacho will want to see. The, the, the replays of, 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 of yeah. the weekend games, you know, because he, he really turned in. Probably, is that, is, that, is that probably one of the best individual performances all season sure, sure, from any sure, player across European football? Sure, sure. Three wins on the bounce now for uh, VRL, 47 points, and they're pretty much in prime position to Contact make Champions that uh, Champions League spots uh, alongside Real Sociedad and Atletico Madrid, who are in good form themselves. They won five on the bounce. But I totally enjoyed um, the uh, spotlight on some of the Nigerians uh, in diaspora. We started off with Israel Desanya, we touched base with Anthony Joshua, we touched base with Samuel Chukwizi as well. But watch out for Victor Simon this week in the Champions League because it's live for you on Tuesday and Wednesday. Fala Nadini, always a pleasure. Thank you very much always indeed for coming through. My name is Yubi, and so do whatever. Send us an email on the uh, email account, and of course, you can also reach us on social media at Sportsbits across all social media platforms. We'll see you very soon. Bye bye. <laughs>